Welcome back to RFL. In our previous segment, you heard from Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney as he seeks re-election in New York's 18th Congressional District. Former Republican Congresswoman Nan Hayworth, who lost in the race against Maloney back in 2012, is in the race again this year, vowing to get her old job back. I spoke with Congresswoman Hayworth about her campaign to try and unseat Congressman Maloney. As you're touring around the 18th district on your uh, campaigning for office once again, what's the, the biggest issue that seems to be popping up? What do people tell you more than anything else? Sure. Well, it, it is definitely our economy. People are working as hard as they can to try, their, try to keep their heads above water here. They're trying to uh, afford the cost of living here. They're trying to see if their kids can get jobs here and not have to move away. Seniors are hoping they don't have to move away from their families, but it's getting awfully hard to do, and they're frustrated with the fact that Congressman Maloney uh, has been a voice and a vote for that enormous Washington agenda that's just placing burdens on us. You know, he, his first vote in the House was to have Speaker Pelosi return to the Speaker's gavel. Well, that's a disastrous agenda. Obama, Pelosi, Maloney agenda uh, spells uh, disaster, frustration, loss of jobs, higher prices for the Hudson Valley, and that's what I'm hearing. So what is the specific formula for relief for people who have that fear? How do you improve the economy of the Hudson Valley and keep people in the Hudson Valley? We are tied up in so many burdens that are directly related to that Pelosi, Obama, Maloney agenda. Let's start with the Affordable Care Act, which has made our care unaffordable. It's a trillion dollar gift to the insurance, to the insurance industry. We need to completely overhaul that. Uh, the big financial law that was passed in 2010 has tied up our local community lenders so that people can't get loans or mortgages. Uh, the regulators, FERC, is <laughs> stepping all over the Hudson Valley with an electricity price hike. In 2011, I sponsored legislation, the RAINS Act, to stop them from ever doing something like that and make them accountable to our representatives in Congress. Congressman Maloney voted no to the RAINS Act. Uh, you know, this is uh, an agenda that we simply can't afford. Is there is there any way to know when relief might be able to come to the Hudson Valley and, and when people might be able to feel a difference if there's a new era with Absolutely. your return to Washington? Absolutely. When we when we lighten those burdens, the beneficial uh, effects will be felt immediately. And when when we change the law so that people can actually afford their insurance, they're not paying this extraordinary premium to the insurance industry. We'll feel it in jobs from our, especially from our local small employers here, right here in the Hudson Valley. When we put the reins on FERC, then we will have energy price relief. When we say to the regulators uh, who are trying to burden us with Dodd-Frank, you simply can't do that anymore. And we can pass those laws very quickly if we have uh, a House and a Senate that will do it. You're talking about some of the major laws that were passed under President Obama since he took office. It, are you saying that what we need to do is basically go back six years to a period before President Obama was in office? That's that's the solution, just reverse no, the clock? No, no. You know what? As a doctor, Andrew, I remember uh, what it was like to hear that an insurer had denied care. Uh, denied coverage to one of my patients. It was awful. We never want to go back to those days in health care. We do need a fresh approach and we need to empower the folks here to be able to afford their health care. I just, there's a wonderful small businessman from Way Way Onda, Scott Pilot, who came to talk with me and said, you know, man, my insurance premiums have gone from $770 a month to $1,225 and our deductible is now $8,000. And that's on the exchange, by the way. I can't afford insurance now. Now, nobody should be in that position and he called Congressman Maloney's office three times and got no response at all. That should never happen. So it seems like we're, we're back to the one of the basic divisions between the parties or between the ideologies, which is it, you're arguing that if you just take some of the reins off of businesses and off of individuals, they'll thrive on their own. The competing view is maybe there's something you can do to inject redevelopment and inject assistance to a community directly. You want to just take the reins off? You don't. Is there any tangible thing that should be done to directly help the Hudson Valley and the people in the Hudson Valley? Well, the best thing we can do is, is untie our small businesses, the mom and pops on Main Street, who are the engine of growth for, uh, for all of us across the Hudson Valley and across the country. And right now, 
they are being burdened with mandates from the Affordable Care Act, which is unaffordable, trillion dollar gift to the insurance industry. Uh, they can't get loans or mortgages the way they really ought to be. Our community bankers would love to give loans and mortgages, and they can't because they're tied up by the regulators. They need to see their energy prices come down. We can do that immediately if we tell FERC, you can impose an energy price hike on us. All of these are things that unfortunately Congressman Maloney has supported. That big Washington agenda, we need to lift those burdens. And then yes, when we have the resources here in our communities, I have complete faith in the folks here to, uh, to do a great job and grow jobs and have a great standard of living here. You've mentioned your opponent, Congressman Maloney, a couple of times. Yeah. Obviously you disagree with his policy positions and the votes that he's taken. What's your take of him in terms of representing the Hudson Valley in Congress, representing the interests or the needs of the district, and also his leadership within the House itself? Well, look, the problem, Andrew, is, is simple. He has voted time and again for a Washington-heavy Pelosi, Obama, Maloney agenda that just places burdens on us, ties us up, makes it impossible for us to create jobs in our communities to to have uh, the kind of take-home pay that we should his agenda is the wrong agenda for the hudson valley he stands with washington i stand with the folks here it, it sounds almost as though you're framing the race not just against congressman maloney but also against president obama to a certain degree in your mind as a as a vote for Congressman Maloney, a vote for President Obama, and a vote for Dan Hayworth, a vote against President Obama? Well, it's a vote. A vote for me is a vote for our communities here. You know, it's, it, that's a positive thing. To the extent that the president has placed burdens on us, and he has, uh, we need to fight against that. I will, and I have. Congressman Maloney has it. He says he's independent. He's voted 80% of the time with former Speaker Pelosi, whom he wants to return to the speakership, and President Obama. That's not independent. That's not good for the Hudson Valley. And, and finally, Congresswoman, this is a district that has been in flux. Obviously, the borders have changed, but also the voting habits have changed. This district has voted and flipped parties every election since 2008. First of all, I assume you think that they're due for another flip, otherwise you wouldn't have gotten back in the race. Yes. What is it about this district that has made them go both directions so frequently, and why do you think they'll do so again? Well, I'm looking just at the election this year, and I know being privileged to have the Republican and conservative and independents uh, lines on our ballot that I'm going to be the Hudson Valley's choice again, and I'll go back and fight for us and put the power back where it belongs here in our communities. Up next, we speak with Congresswoman Nita Lowy, who's seeking her 14th term representing New York's 17th district. That when we come back.